For Trump, I would say the revenge tour. He's not someone who forgets slights and insults and everything that he has experienced as a former president over the last four years. And I think he has in his head a list of uh, people or organizations or countries that he will probably target uh, when he returns to the White House as president. And I think it's, you know, I think every country, Republicans, Democrats, everyone in America and everyone overseas should be mindful of. I, I always kind of remember that New York Times, I think it's the New York Times interview that uh, the former President Moon did, where he talked about, in, in criticizing Trump and his dealings with the North Korean leader, he had used the phrase beating around the bush, and I don't think that went well with Trump. Um, he made some, uh, threw out some tweets that uh, attacked uh, or defended himself and attacked President Moon. So I think something like that is going to come back and bite Korea, even though President Moon is no longer president. Former Secretary of Defense Mark Esper's book, um, he recounted an episode of deliberations on this issue with the president. And he mentioned that the then Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, had asked President then President Trump to delay this and make this a second term priority. And I do think this will become a second term priority. But I think in terms of foreign policy, repositioning troops, the Korea issue will probably come after a notable uh, vocal opposition to NATO. I think if there is a order to things, it'll be NATO first and Korea second. And NATO is a much more complicated issue than Korea. It's not simply just military cost sharing. It's, it's making 32 countries contribute their fair share of their fair share to NATO's alliance, which is basically getting their defense budgets up to 2% of GDP for each of the 32 countries. I wouldn't put it past him. I mean, he, he did it twice during his four years. He knows, and as a president who loves media attention, he knows the world's media will enjoy that. Um, in some of his public statements about, um, very positive statements about Mr. Kim, he has left that door open. And I think Seoul needs to be aware that, like it was with the Moon administration during the first Trump term, they may be on the sidelines watching some of these developments and some of what happens, uh, Trump-led initiatives are kind of going to be out of their hands. I think he's, not, he's no longer an amateur. He knows what it means to be president. He knows what he can do immediately and what he cannot do. And I think Seoul needs to be aware of that, that if he has made a decision on Korea, North Korea, whatever it is, it's hard to make him reverse course and go 180 or even uh, use delay tactics because he just does not have the patience for that. I think the Chinese tried that. Europeans have tried that. It does not work. And it's his last four years in office. He wants to get things done. He wants a legacy. So I think... From the perspective of Seoul, delaying tactics or asking him to reverse course is really meaningless. The best I think Seoul can do is like what they did with um, the IRA, the Inflation Reduction Act, and, and sections of that that Seoul felt was detrimental to Korea. And I think that is to engage with both Congress and the White House. Also, make the most of it. I mean, if this is a train going in one direction get on board, and I think that's a lesson that Seoul needs to be aware of. In terms of engagement, because that's important, I'm always surprised by so-called Trump aides who go public with media, granting interviews, because I think the ones who are closest to him, the ones who have its ear, don't really, are not, don't go on record and don't like being profiled. And I know the Korean government likes engaging with people who are seen as close to the president, but the ones especially who have his ear on national security, I think they stay out of the press. They don't grant media interviews. And, um, and so you need to like, I think Seoul needs to focus on those people that may have influence with President Trump and his second term agenda, and but stay out of the news. So these are, these are difficult people to find.